All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the studio. My name is Amy Klein. I am the resident artist here at Jerry's Artorama, as well as the host of Jerry's Live. Um, and this is open studio hour. So if you are not familiar, uh, this is essentially just an hour where I do my normal everyday job, and you guys are free to welcome and er, welcome to be coming in words. I also struggle with words, in case you don't know me. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. Please just appreciate the mess that is the verbal nonsense that comes out. Uh, but if you do have any questions, uh, even if it's not related to what I'm doing, or if you just had that burning question of something that's related to your own artwork, feel free to pop it in the chat. I'm going to actually get my chat going so you guys can actually talk straight to me. Uh, but I do have the amazing Amanda over Hello. here. Yes, so she's going to make sure that I don't miss any questions in case I'm just enthralled with what I'm doing. So uh, let me get this started. Also make sure my volume is down. If I can find the button, there we go. There we go. Live chat, not top chat. I always forget to turn that. All right. So today I am going to be working in oil paints. I might need a little bit more of the titanium white there. Paulo, hello, hello. Thank you for joining us. I haven't decided if I'm gonna, uh, I probably do need to use the liquid because I need this painting to be dry in a week or at least touch dry to for in a week. Uh, and as you can see, I'm gonna be painting a banana. Um, it's gonna be my banana series. <laughs> I'm very excited about this. All right, so I have a glass palette here, so please excuse the reflections, it's lights. If we didn't have those on, you guys wouldn't be able to see me. All right, here's my reference photo. I did print this off exactly to the size that I wanted it on um, my canvas, uh, just so I don't really have to worry about scaling up or down or worrying about proportions. Um, it's just a simple way of kind of, if you want to transfer an image over without having to extra think about it, this is a nice way of doing it. Um, but I'm going to be working in oils. I'm going to be working in the Lucas 1862, which in general does dry pretty quickly. Um, but I think I'm going to actually need to add in some liquid just to make sure that it's touch dry by the time we film this next week. So, uh, banana painting. All right. Brian from North Carolina. All right. Representing the North Carolina. Nice. All right, I'm gonna get started. Otherwise, this is just gonna take me forever. Um, oh, and in case you guys are wondering, this down here is a swatch of paint that had been put on here for our canvas show. And you know, I just the swatch of paint so you guys could see the, the texture that was on here for the show. Uh, but we always keep these panels and things just so we can do art on top of them. We, we recycle, so it's, that's what that is, but it's fully dry. And it's so thin that it's not gonna really affect my painting at all. All right. All right. And the only two colors I'm gonna be using on this right now, in case you are wondering, is Payne's Gray and Titanium White. Um, so I'm going to actually darken the whole thing quite a bit um, after I sketch in where my banana is going to go. This is, I'm hoping my, my forehead isn't going to get into the shot, but I feel like this is one of those things where I need it like slightly tilted. Um... No, because I feel like a table easel would be a little too much. So you know what I'm going to do? Eraser. Oh. I'm going to take an eraser, and I'm going to just slightly tilt. Actually, maybe if I go that way, I can tilt my canvas up just a little bit. I'm not going to be scrubbing at it too much, so that might help me a little bit. I'd be really impressed if that thing holds. It's, it's not that much weight. This panel is really, really light. I guess you're not 
I'm not, dry. yeah, so. I'm being pretty gentle, but I just need it slightly propped so that I can make sure that my proportions and like angles and everything are correct. Because as you draw things, if they're laying flat on a table and they're at an angle from you, um, it's going to skew it a bit. So then by the time you pick it up and look at it straight on, your drawing is going to look off. I drew that a little too far over. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do something I don't actually need to do very often. Take my easy wiper. That's on when the eraser will fall. Alright. We're going to prop it back up so we can get this going again, huh? All right, that is the wrong side. Hold on. Ah! Okay, now it's starting to get all all wonky. That's fine. That's fine. I will. I feel like you had like lightning in a bottle the first time where it didn't fall, and then it said, "No, I don't want to cooperate after all." Yeah, that's valid. But I still need it slightly higher. Okay, nobody breathe. <laughs> Either I'm really good at balancing canvases onto an eraser just the wrong direction, or my luck today is pretty high. I'll let you guys take bets on what it is. Yeah, this looks better. I had it just over a little too much towards the right, and I really want to make sure I get that nice um, shadow going. I think it was just not quite right. Don't be afraid to erase out your uh, original sketch if it's not working for you. I think this was in the right spot though. Maybe I had a bit too much of a curve. I think it's a little straighter than I thought it was. Heard that. What? Guys are whispering behind the scenes. I think that's, where's my? Yeah, I think that'll work. All right, so the shadow. Right it. now it looks like the Chili's logo. It does look <laughs> a little like a chili. So I swear it's a banana. <laughs> it's gotta be a banana. Like a that's the other cool thing is that I could actually, to get a different perspective, I could actually put this on camera and look at the, the monitor and see if my drawing is off, which is really cool. And you're right, it does look like a chili, doesn't Listen, it? I have not looked at your table today because the camera's in the way and I really thought you had a real banana. <laughs> And you just made that, that picture. <laughs> oh, Amanda. It's a very good picture of a it is a great picture of a banana, isn't it? Although I got some oil paint on there. Whoops. That's okay. Ignore that. All right, so there's that shadow. I can definitely tell that my drawing is still a little bit off up here, but that's all right. I can kind of work on that as I go along. This is the basic placement, I guess. Hey, what panel are you using? I am using, oh geez, the Raphael Bell RT. This is an oil primed panel. It's nine by 12, so it actually is a uh, wood. Uh, so I believe this is a birch wood panel with oil primed linen mounted on top of it. It was just the one that we had used in the the canvas panel show. Because I, I want to make sure that I use the panels that we have lying around. Okay. 
That is probably good enough for right now. <laughs> chili, yeah, it looks like a chili, doesn't it? Which still would be an awesome painting, but I need to paint a banana, not, not a chili. It's all right. Eventually it'll look like a banana. But I definitely want to on the rest of my canvas. Do they have an acrylic version? Ah, do we have an acrylic version where it's the canvas mounted on birch? Um, no, the closest we would have is a Da Vinci panel that would be the birch panel already gessoed and primed, but it's not an actual canvas surface. Um, we do also have birch panels that you can mount can your own canvas to, but it's definitely, I don't think we have an acrylic version of that. If we do, Amanda, can you let me know? I feel like I'm she's on it. I have not heard of that, but also that we carry so much that there's a... Yeah. We have a lot of items available. It's kind of hard to keep them all straight sometimes. Banana dreams to be a chili, but it is born to be a banana, and a banana it is for sure. <laughs> I think that we got really deep on the banana metaphor. I like it. I approve it. The world needs more banana metaphors. Let me go this way. Which, to be honest, at the end of this uh, show, this is only going to be a grayscale banana. It's not actually going to be yellow, so. It might still look like a chili. Ooh, banana peppers. There we go. Now we're getting kind of into the realm of both options. <laughs> Make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. All right, so what I am, just so you guys do know, um, the initial line that I drew down is so thin because I'm using the solvent um, that it's it's not fully dry, but it's way drier than this like area that I had just laid down. Um, so now I'm kind of going back in with my brush and kind of almost carving out the shapes that I need out of those darker tones. And this is how I usually fix my oil painting drawings before I jump in with all of the other tones. The closest thing I'm seeing is the canvas mounted to the Da Vinci panels. Yeah. Which actually... Which comes in oil and We do the custom, custom canvas. Don't we do custom panels? I don't... I believe we I do know custom that we panels. I New York Central on the Lumicon, but I don't know if we do custom mounting. I could have sworn... I think we did? I could have sworn we did do custom mounting. Like, you can pick like whatever canvas you want and it'll be mounted onto, Amanda will tell me for sure, but I wanna say it was, we could mount it to whatever um, Da Vinci panel. Again, we have so many things, it is hard to keep them all straight in my brain. But this is why I have a, the amazing Amanda. Again, I need this slightly propped up. 
Now that line with the New York Central canvas on a Luma Comp is probably the closest thing. Okay. There are tons and tons of options on that. Mm -hmm. um, but I know when I was doing the custom stuff, all it was was the stretch canvas. And I feel like it would have had to go through me if it, yeah. if it did happen. I'm not sure if stores offer. We might. But. But I could have sworn we had Leo doing that, but. It might have been a thing at one point in time. Yeah, we have like the, and we also have the primed gessoed Aluma comps, but that's not like a custom thing, it's just you pick what's yeah. best for you. <clears throat> Darker. Banana chilies. Yes. All right. Awesome. So I'm going to put that link for those panels for, I can't remember who it was that was asking. Karen. Karen. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for you, Karen, I'm going to put that link in the, uh, the chat for you to check out. And if you have any questions on that, Amanda really is like the go-to uh, guru when it comes to custom, custom things. more banana-esque. It's good to be able to like not look at it here and look at it in the screen. It's so good. For anybody who is out there painting, make sure you do take a step back from your artwork, look at it upside down in a mirror, something that kind of disconnects your brain from whatever it is that you're painting and that that's so helpful. Probably would have been more helpful if I had gotten shorter handled brushes because I am working at on this so close but nah that's okay I actually really love the um, the bristles on these the New York Central these are the uh, the, the mix bristles so it's um isn't it a combination of synthetic and natural hairs I believe I believe it's a, a combination. That's why it's the mix. I also have tea. It was very, very cold over here earlier today, so I had to, <laughs> I had to get myself some tea. It's, it's chilly, which is ironic because it's like 80 degrees outside, so.
Cold in the studio, warm outside. All right, so this one. Soften that little line there. Doesn't need to be so harsh. All right. I'm gonna kind of turn it sideways. Ah, let's do it this way, actually. Do it that way now, so we can keep keep it a little different. Keep my brain still kind of disconnected from what I'm drawing. Now I'm just kind of trying to keep the background relatively light. I still want it toned because I don't want it the stark, you know, white that it started off with, which I totally forgot this bottom area down here. Um, Cause I want to be able to have kind of a toned layer. Cause I definitely want to obliterate all of those bright colors. Uh, it tends to help me see exactly my values and everything, um, especially when I start adding in that titanium white where I don't get confused as to what's the brighter areas and what's the darker. Which is very hard to tell because like in color, you can tell the difference between these two areas, but like this is a really bright area of the banana and this is a bright area of the table, so... They're very similar in value, but I believe that banana is just slightly darker. I mean, just slightly, but I'm probably going to make that a little bit more pronounced just so I have it as a black and white. Although, again, I shouldn't say black and white. It's Payne's gray and white, titanium white. So, kind of refine this drawing here a little bit more. The brush I'm using now, it's still the, uh, the New York Central line, but this is actually a Filbert Kalinsky. So, my favorite shape of brush. And uh, the Kalinsky is nice and soft, and it moves my oil paints around really, really softly, which I do love. Sometimes it's just gonna decide it's gonna do what it's gonna do. I'm sure. To list the materials. Um, I'm working on it. Yeah, I was gonna say, I believe Amanda is gonna type that up for you guys.
Thank you, Amanda. But yeah, so these are the, the New York Central Brushes. Um, this is the, it's an SP mix. Uh, I can't remember what the SP stands for. But it's um, the bristles. It's a combination of a natural and a synthetic bristle brush, but it's super soft, so it gets you really, really nice blends. Uh, they're really lovely brushes. I actually really love the um, how soft they are. That's what I was talking about. I think I'm about to the point where I start need to add, um, we're gonna start needing to add a titanium white. So let's start doing that. It's a good midtone. And I'm still keeping my layers very, very light, but just by adding in that titanium, because you can get uh, the same value by just using the Payne's Gray and your solvent and kind of pushing and pulling that around and manipulating the material. Um, but by adding titanium white, you're getting the, the tints of the Payne's Gray, which do tend to lean towards that blue. So that's why it's appearing just so vastly different from everything else. But I am still keeping those layers very, very lean I don't want to build up that fatty content just yet. Because, just so you guys know, oop, and I got a little hair that got attached there. There we go. Uh, just so you guys do know, uh, this is going to be for a future show that we are actually um, pre recording, just in case, you know, I'm either not able to make it here to the studio or if um, I don't have internet while I'm in my, my residency in France. Uh, we just want to make sure you guys still have really good shows that you can watch. So we're doing a couple pre-recorded and this is one of them where I'm going to go over a uh, grisaille painting because this is the, the traditional method where you do the full the full rendering in just one color, like like a black and white kind of a thing. And then you go over, once it's fully dry, you go over it with color and kind of glaze those on really softly. And that's what this is for. But we are going to film that next week. Fun fact, I forgot the liquid. It's okay. Lucas is one of those oils that dries relatively quickly. And this is such a lean layer. I don't think I'm really gonna need it, but you know what? We're gonna do it anyway. Ooh, this is really, really closed. It's also a childproof lock, so you have to push it and turn it, which, let's be honest, you guys know how coordinated I am. Which I think, is that a little hole? Or, nope, that's just the lid. Try not to touch that. I'm gonna put just a touch over here. Okay. 
which is good because that titanium white is going to probably take a little bit longer than everything else to dry. Oop, I think I put that on crooked. There we go. Uh, and the reason why titanium white does usually, no matter what you do, in your lines of paint, the titanium white just takes a little longer to dry. And the reason why is because it usually uses a different oil, just because the linseed oil tends to yellow faster than like say poppy oil or walnut oil. And so usually, or even safflower, um, usually in the white paints uh, in every line, they use either a combination of linseed and another oil or something like that, just so you can keep that really brilliant white color that you're looking for in a white oil paint. So I'm rambling, I'm not paying attention to this. Am I, am I missing? <laughs> Internship in France, yes, thank you so much. I'm very excited, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm hoping to bring you guys with me, but it's in the middle of the country, so we're gonna see if I can. So I know that's all kind of the same value, but I want to definitely keep that going further in shadow, but there's that reflective light that's kind of hitting the banana that direction. So I need to represent that without making it super bright. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually brighten this side of the banana. This is a nice neutrally kind of mid-tone to it though. Uh-oh, did the rain start? The rain has begun. Been waiting for it all day. Yeah, it was supposed to rain all day today and it's only just started, so. Now I'm gonna start feeling sleepy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is why I'm also drinking tea with caffeine in it. <laughs> Oh, yes. All right, and I'm also using a brush that's a little too big for all my details, and I'm doing that on purpose, uh, specifically because I don't want to get super de duper detailed. I kind of want to be able to nail down the general kind of important information, like where my shadows are, where my values are, what, what are the values, and Oh, is that the thunder? Thunder, it's no, just really literally. <laughs> yeah, no, we're supposed to have, I really hope we're not gonna have any um, issues right now. Uh, and if we do, I'm so sorry guys, because there is a severe thunderstorm that's about to be rolling into our area. So we're gonna, hopefully, if you hear thunder or anything, that's what it is, but I hope it doesn't mess with the connection. But if we do get bumped, we'll try to get back on. <laughs> Knock on table for luck. Somebody knock on wood for, for luck for me. <laughs> not be the exact shape at the bottom there that I need. Again, I'm using a brush that's way too big and that's on purpose. I don't want to get super detailed, but I'm trying to kind of still keep the shape of the brush or um, the shape of the banana kind of accurate. But the more important thing right now is kind of where things lie and those values, like the shadow that I'm about to put in.
little bit more tea. That's some good tea. And that little spot that I had originally on there, I'm gonna end up obliterating, obliterating words, uh, that with the titanium white. So again, that's gonna be completely gone at the end of this. And I am not at all worried. Ooh, there's that thunder. is a mood. It's a little too much liquid. So whenever it comes to liquid, I just want to add enough to my oils to where it gets a nice consistency. And also, side note, I always forget to mix with a palette knife. This is, if you're not very good at mixing with your brush, this is a great tool. Um, I always forget about it. But for me, the one thing whenever you are mixing with your brush, you'll never see me really scrub my brush into my paint. You usually see me kind of pulling it like this. I might do, you know, a little swirly kind of action. But for the most part, I'm always still going in the same direction as I would when I paint. And that's why I mix with my brush, but I still make sure that the way that I do it is still very good for my brush and I'm not destroying the poor thing. Because these are awesome brushes. You don't wanna you don't wanna hurt your brushes. Be nice to the brushes. <laughs> softer and feathers out. And there's like an odd sharp line right here on the uh, on the shadow of the banana. Oh, and if you guys are interested in the reference photo, because it is not a photo that I took, um, as much as I could very easily take a photo of banana, um, I don't have bananas at home, so I couldn't. Uh, which is a very, very good reason why I didn't. Um, but I I go to uh, my royalty-free websites, uh, which is unsplash.com or even Pixabay are my, my two favorites that I always end up using. Um, the reason why that is so important, excuse you, Thunder. Uh, the reason why that's so important, though, is because I definitely don't want to get in trouble for using someone else's image, because this is somebody's artwork that I'm painting from. Um, I don't want to, you know, use someone's artwork without their permission. So uh, when it comes to painting, things like that, like if you did not take the photo, you do not own the photo. Just general rule. And if you did not take the photo and you don't own it, then... You can paint it, but you cannot sell your artwork. You cannot make any kind of a profit from your painting, even though this is my painting, but that's not my photo. So it's one of those things where um, I know that there is a rule as far as how much you're supposed to change an image, because you can use them as reference and then use that in another piece of artwork, but you have to kind of slightly tweak it a little bit uh, and there's a percentage of how much you have to change it in order for you not to ha get into trouble. Um, and I believe all of that is available. If you if you search for it, um, you can find that. But that's definitely one of those things that... Um, uh oh, it's not a mistake. It's finished. Or unfinished? I, I feel like not, I missed so much in the it's chat. It's not a mistake unless you give up. And then I was like, it feels that's like true. it's not a mistake. It's just not finished yet. That is very true. <laughs> I was very distracted. Um, but yeah, so that's just a side rant about royalty-free images. Royalty-free is great for artists looking for reference photos. And, and that's the thing is that royalty-free um, websites like that, usually they have, um, you know, you can find the rules on 
what you can do with the artwork, like what kind of permissions they have. Um, but that way you can make sure that you protect yourself as an artist. Which is Mark so said important. He had to split, and I'm just not sure if that's a banana joke. Nah. <sighs> Pun intended, Mark. I feel like. I'm afraid he might be gone, but I just need to know. Mark, if you get to watch this in the future, I hope that was a dad joke. We love dad jokes around here. So good. <laughs> Just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Also, that was my hip popping. Whew. There's all kinds of noises happening in the studio tonight. <laughs> it's okay. Rain happens, you know? I really do wish we had like a nice wide open like window with all the rain falling. Oh, Ugh, that would be fun. Christina and I would just be napping. <laughs> That's okay. I'll just be up here rambling about art and art related things. You guys can nap. I won't tell anybody. Or turn the cameras around on you guys. I swear. Yeah, that rain's getting strong. <laughs> Ooh, we do only have 15 minutes left. All right, so because we have 15 minutes left, and I'm going to try to talk a little louder to make sure you guys can hear me over the rain. I'm sorry. Uh, it's, I wish we could turn it down a little bit, but if you guys do have any... Uh, questions even if it's not related to oil painting or whatever I'm rambling about you guys can you know feel free to pop that into the chat I will pay attention and if I don't there's Amanda keeping me on task but I'm just gonna keep painting my banana Like, now that I got this really bright tone, this is why it's so important to lay down your values in big chunks before you start getting into all those details. Because as I'm laying down this really bright area of my table, remember I told you this area of the banana is so bright and so is that table that they're very similar in value. That banana is still very, very bright, and I very obviously don't have that in here. So, like, I don't have any light really hitting my banana on this side, so I'm going to need to fix that before I get too far. But I'm still going to need to put down this table kind of color before I get too far. Now, I will say also, I do need your guys' help because this is a, this is gonna be a banana series, right? And so let me actually put this down here like that, right? So this is, this is banana B. My banana A painting was this. <laughs> so this actually started off in grayscale just like this. And then I did the glazing of colors on top of it um, so now I'm going to also do a third one where it's just a banana peel where like, you know, the banana eating the banana and then the bananas just a peel. Um, I made this a really bright bubblegum pink. Should I keep all of them really bright bubblegum pink or should I change the colors? Cause like as much as I like this, I think the background, like the table that it's on needs to be a color. So should I stick with pink or should I go to another color so you guys I need I need your help tell me what color should be around my banana I it cannot be yellow because that's a little too similar as much as I love that idea I need 
I need a little bit of contrast. And that was the other thing. Uh, here's my other reference yes. for the I third one I'm going to do. Yeah, but the, I was like, I love this. You guys know, if you know me on the show, you know we love some teal. And I love this color. This is such a very just poppy color. And it makes me so happy. But I just, this one needs some background color, you know? So what color? What color are we doing? Change the color, but keep them pastel. I like that. That's fun. Change the colors, yes. I like I like the idea of changing the colors. I just you can also go with all three the same, you know. Although I'd have to remember what color I did this background. <laughs> which which specific red I mixed with white. Although I could find it. I have all of my swatches over there. I was looking for the perfect bubblegum pink and it just, it took me a solid minute to swatch out all of my reds in the Lucas line because I'm apparently extra when it comes to my bubblegum pink background on my banana painting. It's okay. I'll admit it. I'm okay with this. Green and blue. Ooh, I do like that, Karen. That's a good... That's a good one. I feel like that would be green, blue, and pink. Or, well, no, because it's... If we do... I was going to say, like, the primary colors... Ooh, hello, Thunder. If we were to do the primary colors, we'd do blue, red, and yellow, but, like, pastels. But, like, I don't want to do yellow. I like, yeah. I like like a minty, a minty green would be fun, but I feel like that would be on this one, yeah. right? So then this one would be blue. Yeah. I like that. But then there's also purple. I know. I like purple ideas. Because purple, purple looks great. It's just dreamy. I don't know. There's something so pop art about it. I love yeah. it so Isn't it great? Much. Like a lavender would be oh, fun. Like Cause like purple and yellow together, they're opposites on the color wheel so they would just vibrate. But I don't know if I want that kind of contrast on just one of them, cause it would overpower. See, these are the things we have to think about as an artist. Color selection is so important. And what does it really say about my banana? I really hope that's not like a snippet that you take from this show and do like a blooper reel, but what does it say about my banana? I've still been waiting for a blooper reel from you guys. Like I know it's coming. There's so many bloopers from the show and from me just in general being on camera. Yeah, I might I might have been hangry. Not gonna lie. I might have skipped breakfast and that was one of those times where we were filming at like 10.30 in the morning. Yeah. Listen, I'm like Katie, you just need to feed me and I'm happy. I do a little happy dance. Ah, the schedule for these open hours. Um, so speaking of, I'm glad you asked. Um I almost said Karen, but that was Miss Tamp. Um so the schedule is we do these every first and third Thursdays of the month where you guys can kind of, you know, jump in and kind of chat with us and talk about whatever. Um, usually I do the first one of the month and Jamie does the second one. But this month we actually had to kind of switch our schedules around just because of things that were happening. And so I will be all of April and Jamie's going to be all of May. So um, I will be on the next one, which is in two weeks, I believe. I don't know what the date is off the top of my head, but it's the 21st. 21st. I will be back on April 21st, and then Jamie's going to take over in May, and then what, after May we're going to go back to our normal every other show. Also, what you can do is. 
subscribe and hit that bell. Because then you'll be notified when we go live. Um, you do have to make sure your notifications for it is on. I did actually turn mine off and missed one one time. Sorry. Uh, but um, if you hit the subscribe button and you hit the notify with a little bell, then uh, it should tell you exactly when we go live every time. So you don't have to remember, it remembers for you, which is my kind of a reminder. I need a little bit more liquid. Oh, these childproof caps. It's great when you have a kid, but... Not when you are the kid. <laughs> yes. Just when you think you have it open, it's still clicking around. birthday to a son, Mrs. Karen's son. Karen's son. Oh, he say, his name is Jack. Happy birthday, Jack. I hope you have an awesome birthday filled with all the things that make you happy and good food. You always need good food on your birthday. Because <laughs> clearly I'm all about food on here. <laughs> I'm painting a banana, I'm talking about it. snacking, I'm telling you, you should have good food on your birthday. I swear I ate lunch. Oh, I'm looking at this painting, you're like, why is my reference photo not matching up with what I'm painting? Because it's the wrong one. I think we had a live one time where you were doing one of the sweets little guys and literally all we talked about the whole time was food. cake yeah was like dessert <laughs> I still have not finished those I feel so bad I have to do that soon it's just one of those projects that have just been kind of put on the back burner it's still sitting over there but that is the name of the game with the job is that you have to make sure that uh, the paintings that need to be done when they need to be done are done Karen said they're going out for all three meals. That is the day That's, I want to live. Yes. That sounds amazing. Karen, you're an awesome mom. too much but that's all right I will fix that so at this stage going back to my drawing and not snacking uh, at this stage I am still kind of fixing my drawing here and there um, but for the most part I have everything kind of nailed down wherever I need it but if I find that something is off I am NOT going to hesitate to change it Although the great thing about painting a banana, even if it's not perfect and a photorealistic representation of your photo reference, uh, no one's going to know. How would they know? How would they know? It's our favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's my, my motto when it comes to my artwork is no one's going to know. You say it all the time and then Katie and I are always just like, why would they know? Exactly. For me... You guys do know because you, there's, there's video evidence. <laughs> That's for me, but for you guys, it's fine. Yeah, five minutes. Five minutes. Woo. <laughs> it's crazy how much just changing the value in the background just really makes it be like, that's a banana. And this is why you try not to get stuck in on those details, but yeah, that's, um, 
Changing the background is such a huge thing and it makes such a big impact on your painting. Uh, that's why I try to really knock out a good chunk of the values inside of whatever it is that I'm painting, whether it be a portrait or um, you know, a banana, coconut, whatever it is that I'm painting. Uh, but then as soon as I get the majority of like just basic tones down, I will go back after that, that background because backgrounds are so forgotten. Um, and it's just, it, it's one of those things that you really do forget that it's part of your artwork. And if you don't take care of it, it's going to be distracting from this beautiful image that you've painted. And so don't forget about your background. If you knock that out at the beginning, you get to focus on all those really fun, juicy details that you want to focus on in the rest of the painting. Plus, then you can paint whatever it is on top of the background and you don't have to worry about carving around an object to get something to look right or in the right placement. Too much paint on my brush. And I want to blend out a little bit of this area. Just to kind of soften that shadow. And that's how I soften my, my um, when I lay down chunks of values like this. If I take my brush and I get most of the paint off of it, um, I can kind of come in and it's not a clean brush, but again, I'm only using one color, so it's not going to get that muddy. Um, but I can kind of smooth those edges out just a bit. Because your edges are important in a painting. You want a combination of some that are soft, some that are hard. Keeps it visually interesting. but I do need to work on this core shadow here because I feel like it's a little on the dark side up here and it's very anemic down here. It's a very lean layer, so I had very little pigment on there when I did that initial kind of wash. Yeah, that's gonna look better. So, ooh, we are just about out of time, guys. I am going to continue to paint this because um, I need to get it done <laughs> in general. Um, but that was open studio hour. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you got to kind of giggle about the fact that I talk about snacks all the time. Uh, <laughs> and uh, maybe learned a little something about oil painting. but. Uh, I am going to continue this on to a future Jerry's Live show, so you will get to see the banana in all of its finished final glory uh, as a yellow banana, not just a blue chili pepper. <laughs> it does look like a chili pepper, doesn't it? Um, it looks like a banana now. It, okay, good. Oh, as long as it looks like a banana. I mean, I feel like once I paint it yellow, it's really going to look like a banana, but you always sure. worry about this. But, um... We're gonna hopefully survive this rainy storm. I hope you guys are, have better weather than we do, but uh, that was Open Studio Hour, and my name is Emmy Klein, and join me for Jerry's Live every Tuesday. Uh, we're live from 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you can see me very eloquently say words. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time, bye.